Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College, Renewable Energy Technology Program, this is EET 122, Digital 2. Today we are going to discuss decoders. The basic function of any decoder is basically to detect the presence of a specified combo of bits, i.e. the code, on its input and indicate the presence of that code by a specified output. Let's say we wanted to detect a 3 on a 4-bit system. so a3, A2, A1, A0. What does a 3 look like? Well, in the 1's place it's a 1, it's a 2's place it's a 1, 4, 0, 8, 0. So we want to know when a 3 shows up. That's a decimal 3. So what we would do is just pipe these. Uh, what's going on there? to an AND gate, and let's invert these guys right here. And that is our decoder. It's considered a decoder because it's an active high. Anytime a 3 shows up, it's going to give us a 1. So that's an active high output. Anytime the presence of that specified combo of bits, in this case a 3, is on its input, indicates its presence by a specified output, a 1. So there's just something else out there, too. It's called an active low output. So an active low output is well, it's the same thing as an active high, except it's low. So what it's saying is anytime the presence of that code happens, it means it's going to have a zero on the output. So I know some of you guys are sitting here like this. One second here. Active low. We just learned about active high. So he's telling me now that there's an active low. Boom, your head just exploded. Okay. So don't freak out about this. Just think of as an active low is if we wanted an active low for this thing well we could put an inverter right here but we could also just use a NAND gate right there so whenever these guys all have a one on their inputs to the NAND because it was original a2 and A3, those were zeros to begin with, but now they're ones after they've gone through those inverters there. Anytime that all four inputs to that NAND gate is a one, you get a zero. That's active low. Regrettable, I know that you guys have been working with active high for a while, but it's like the English system, it's out there, active low. Uh, it's a very common um, means of decoding. Okay, so. Now, we just talked about this 3 here, um, detect the presence of a 3 with an active low output. Now, check this out. If we just took a bunch of NAND gates and just kept on lining them up, kept on lining them up, and this is an output, that's an output, that's an output, and this right here, it's got its four inputs there. And if we did every single exhaustive combination of a 3, a 2, a 1, a zero, you know, going from zero, 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 all the way down to one, 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 one. And like, say, for example, the zero, we'd have to negate all four inputs. The next one is zero, 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 one. We We'd only have to negate the first three inputs there. And then the next guy is zero, zero, one, zero. So we'd have to negate that input there. And on and on and on and on. What you get here is you get four bits coming in. A0, A1, A2, A3. And you have 16 NAND gates outputs there, an active low output for 0 all the way to 15 active low output. What you've just created is a 74 154. And what that is is a four line to 16 line decoder. So, four line, oops, <laughs> four line to 16 line decoder.
Just think about it. you got four lines right here coming in. You got 16 lines coming out. The other way you can call this is 1 of 16. Decoder. Because basically, for any one combination of inputs from 0, 0, 0, uh, all the way to 1, 1, 1, 1, you're only going to get only one of these guys is going to have an active low. Let's say you get 1, 0, 0, 1, which is ordinarily power 1, power 8, so that's 9. They get fed into here. Well, the ninth pin is going to have a 0 on it. All the rest of them are going to be hot, high because this is an active low. Okay? So um, there's a couple other uh, other things on the 74154. There's these enable, well, this enable section right here. This is a block diagram, by the way. As CS1, CS2 with a bar over them. Those are the chip selects. What that chip select does, that's an enable. Uh, basically, it's saying when both of those are low, uh, excuse me, excuse me, but when, uh, here, I'll actually just draw it here for you. So the chip selects, both chip selects feed into a single NOR gate, and that makes up the enable key right there. The, the, the NOR gate can also be replaced with, this just makes it a little bit easier, which does, with a negative AND. Um, basically, it needs, the, both of these need to be a zero coming in for the enable to be a one. And what the enable does, it's fed to every single one of those 16 NAND gates there. So even though you've got one, two, three, four uh, inputs to those NAND gates of A0 to A3, and there's some combination of, of inverters on those lines right there, whatever they may be. There's a fifth one right here, and that's the enable single, signal. The enable has to be one for an active low output to happen, because otherwise, if the enable is a zero, you know, think about this here. This enable is a ground. Regardless of what the rest of these guys would be, that NAND gate would still have an input of zero, so you'd always have a high there. But if this was a plus five, now if A0, let's say I've got inverters on these two right there. So if that's a zero and that's a zero, that's a one and a one, and I've got a plus five right there. When those two signals go through the inverters, they come out ones, everything's one there that's an active low. And what we're doing is we're signaling for the presence of 12. So eight and four. So that's an active low output. So basically just chip selects, they both have to be zero for the enable, uh, for this, uh, for this chip to be enabled to put an output. Basically, enabling allows it to have an output. Disabling, no output.